This is a short presentation on a type of pottery that was made at the Desert Mission in Sunny Slope, Arizona during the 1930s. The vases and bowls made here were very colorful decorative wares that were sold primarily as souvenirs. Very little has been written about the pottery despite its interesting and unusual history. Most of the workers who made the pottery, for example, suffered from tuberculosis. They were patrons of a Presbyterian city mission where pottery making was offered as an early type of occupational therapy. Although the jars and bowls were made of cement, not clay, examples are referred to as items of pottery. And finally, the vessels were created according to techniques patented by an inventor from the Ozarks of Western Missouri. The Desert Mission was one of a half dozen or more sites in the country where, where his pottery was made. The Sunny Slope Desert Mission in the mid-1930s boasted nine buildings packed into a one-acre campus. Its purpose was to serve the poor families in the area, most of whom had at least one family member with tuberculosis. Under Director Reverend Joseph Hillhouse, the mission offered com community residents both spiritual guidance and opportunities to participate in social activities. It was not a sanitarium and very few medical services were provided. Hillhouse said his goals for the mission were to bring joy, comfort, and happiness to those isolated on the desert by disease. In pursuit of these goals, Hillhouse in 1935 arranged for Harold Harine of Hollister, Missouri to travel to Arizona and teach the patrons of the desert mission how to make his Comacraft pottery. Hillhouse had visited Harine's pottery a few months earlier and decided Sunny Slope residents would benefit from making similar wares at the mission. He believed the skills could be readily learned and the activity would prove to be interesting and therapeutic for many. Sales of the products would also help the mission financially. Harold Harine's Comacraft pottery was made according to his patent that described a technique for making cement vessels without using traditional molds. The tools he used consisted of a small hand-turned potter's wheel and a template or scraper which shaped the exterior of the vessel as it was turned on the wheel. On the right is a photo of Harine shaping a bowl on the wheel. Although the use of cement and a potter's wheel resulted in a durable, quickly manufactured pot, it was the decorated exterior that made the vessel attractive and saleable. Designs were created by dripping colored pigments on the surface of the vase while it was either turned on the wheel or rotated with calipers. The final look was determined by the speed and angle at which each vase was rotated and the color combinations used. The many interactions of movement and colors made each vessel's decoration unique. Pottery instruction at the Desert Mission started one cold morning in February 1935 at the newly built pottery workshop. Five men attended the first session to learn the techniques. They were expected to serve as instructors once Harold and his mother, Como Crafts business manager, returned to Missouri. The Harines' stay at the mission lasted three weeks. The Arizona version of Harold Harines' pottery, officially named Mission Craft, was introduced in a March 21, 1935 Arizona Republic article as a new kind of pottery made by health seekers in the little community of Sunny Slope, north of Phoenix. The article was very flattering and described the pottery as a distinctly Salt River product that had originated in the far away fastness of the Ozarks. Making the pottery was a popular activity at the mission and in the first few months workers created hundreds of vessels, large and small. In these photos, we can see over 200 pots laid out on the mission grounds. Both jars and vases are present in a variety of sizes. In a close-up view, the pattern of decoration can be seen more clearly. The newspaper article described these pots as colorful and attractive in the entire gamut of colors, rich vivid blues, gypsy-like twirling combinations, and soft pastel shades. The pottery was displayed at the Arizona Biltmore, which is only a few miles from the mission, and sold initially at temporary storefronts in downtown Phoenix. Most sales, however, were made at the mission itself. Thanks to Hill House's fundraising activities, the Desert Mission was a familiar name to many across the country. Tours were conducted regularly, particularly to winter visitors, and observation of the craftsmen at work often resulted in the sale of a souvenir example at the gift shop. 
Two years after introducing the pottery, the newspaper again highlighted the project with a photo captioned, Picturesque Pottery, Pottery is a Work of Beauty, which noted that vessels were used to achieve a Grecian garden effect on the grounds. Whether regarded as a Grecian garden effect or not, pieces of the pottery were certainly placed in areas of the mission campus. Here we see four large vases in front of the entrance to the mission library. Mission craft pottery was made in Sunny Slope for four years until discontinued in 1939 following Reverend Hillhouse's departure. The new director replaced pottery making with a variety of crafts available through the Works Progress Administration. The official reason for stopping was the belief that the weight of the pots and the damp human atmosphere of the pottery shed counteracted the therapeutic value of the activity. The pottery made in Sunny Slope was not believed to have been marked and examples that can be confirmed as mission craft are scarce. There are only two well-documented examples at the Sunny Slope Historical Society Museum. Both items were donated by individuals who had obtained them at the mission. Thanks to the wearer's durability and attractive appearance, more examples are likely waiting to be discovered at thrift shops, antique stores, and on the internet. The two shown here may have been made at the mission. The one on the left was purchased in Phoenix and is similar to many of the pots in the mission yard photo. On the right, the style of decoration and the word Arizona on an old piece of masking tape attached to the bottom lends support to its sunny slope origin. Colorful cement jars and bowls are a collectible now commonly referred to as Ozark Roadside Tourist Pottery. This term includes the original Coma Craft, Arizona Mission Craft, and other swirled decorated cement pottery made according to Harold Herrine's patented technique. The pottery was made in at least six locations in the Midwest, Southwest, Oregon, and Florida. Shown here are several examples recently offered for sale on the internet. Thanks for viewing.